Hello everyone, welcome back to Exatomy Redefining Education. My name is Prabhash Kumar and I am teaching you Engineering Mathematics. So in the first chapter, Basic Concepts of Engineering Mathematics, we have entered into lesson number 8 which is Analytic Geometry and this is the topic Straight Line. So in Analytic Geometry, what all things we have covered? We have covered two dimensional coordinate system. This is the second topic of Analytic Geometry which is Straight Line. So let's get started. So in this straight line, what are the things that we need to learn? First one is the slope of a line. So finding the slope of a line plays a very important role in doing some engineering calculations, right? So slope of line can be given in different formats. So first format is the slope of line given through two points x1, y1 and x2, y2. So suppose you have been given two points x1, y1 and x2, y2 and when you connect these two points you'll get a straight line. So you are asked to calculate what is the slope for this particular straight line. Very simple. So slope represented with a small letter m is given as rise upon run. What is rise? Change in y values divided by run means change in x values. So y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. Okay. Now what is slope? Slope means gradient. Gradient means rate of change. So, okay, so whatever the value for this particular slope of this line, so slope means how, means how this line is changing, right? What is the change? What is the rate of the change of this particular line? Okay, so m is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1, provided x2 minus x1 is not equal to 0. If you make this denominator term as 0, so that means the slope will become undefined and it will really represent a vertical line. Okay. See an example here. So I have two points with me 1 comma 2 and 3 comma 4. When you connect these two points you will get one straight line. So here it is being represented with red color. So this red line as you can see this is a straight line and what is the slope for this line? m is equal to 4 minus 2 upon 3 minus 1. Fine. So 4 minus 2 is 2 divided by 3 minus 1 is 2. So 2 by 2 is cancelled which is 1. So slope of this line is 1. Moving to next, suppose you are asked to calculate what is the slope of the line for this equation that is ax plus by plus c. First you tell me what does this line represent, what does this equation represent? It represents the equation of a straight line. Okay, So ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 represents a straight line, a linear straight line. So what is the slope? Very simple. Small letter m equals to minus a by b. So simply you need to compare from this standard equation and substitute the values here. See an example here. Slope of the line 2x minus 3y plus 4 equals to 0. So when you compare this given equation with this standard equation, you'll find the value of a as 2, b as minus 3 and c as 4. Okay. Now what is the slope? Slope is minus a upon b. So here you have found the value of a as 2. So put here minus 2 divided by b. The value of b here is minus 3. So if you put here minus 3, so minus minus gets cancelled and the slope value will get as 2 upon 3. Alright. Moving to the third category. Third one is finding the slope of a line with inclination of theta degree. R right. So say suppose you have been given some theta angle. Okay. So how will you find the slope? m equals to tan theta. Simple, you need to find the tangent of that given angle, right? But the challenge here is what about the sine? See here, this is black line as you can see, this is my horizontal line. So when you are measuring angle from any horizontal axis anti-clockwise, so that angle is considered as to be a positive angle and when you are turning clockwise from this horizontal axis, so that angle is considered as a negative, right? See here, so theta is equal to 30 degree. So this maroon line as you can see, so this is measured anti-clockwise from horizontal which is making 30 degree. So slope is m equals to tan 30 which is 1 upon root 3. So here which is the angle? What is the sign of the angle? Sign of the angle here is positive. So here angle is positive, slope is positive. Second case here, theta is minus 30 degree. Why I am calling this as minus 30? Because this blue line has been measured in clockwise direction from the horizontal axis, right? So here theta is taken as minus 30. So m is equal to tan of minus 30 equals to minus tan 30. Tan 30 is 1 upon root 3. So this will be minus 1 by root 3. Got it? There is a special case when your theta becomes 90 degree. So if you put tan 90, so that will become 
infinite so I, I, as i told you in the previous so m is equal to infinite that is slope is becoming infinite which means it represents a vertical line now what if theta becomes 0 degree so when theta is 0 degree it means it is a horizontal line okay or if theta is 180 degree that also means it is a horizontal line there is some more point to be noted here so we know very well that the slope is given as m equals to tan theta so here theta is the angle made by the line with the positive direction of the axis make sure so when you are following one convention stick to that particular convention what is the convention that when you are measuring an angle from a horizontal axis and anti-clockwise so that angle is considered as positive and when you are measuring an, any angle clockwise from the horizontal axis that angle is considered as negative see here on the right hand side as you can see so as we are moving anti-clockwise so this line is turning up as can you see this so this line is turning up so we are moving anti-clockwise so since we are moving anti-clockwise and the line is turning up so this angle is considered as positive on the contrary see here this blue line we are moving anti-clockwise downwards even then this angle is positive got it now same thing you can do for this negative also when you are moving clockwise from this horizontal this is negative and when you are moving clockwise this is also negative so here we are moving down and here we are moving up okay so follow this convention that is whenever we are going anti-clockwise from horizontal so the angle is considered as positive and whenever we are moving clockwise from the horizontal so the angle is considered as negative next we have is equation of a line so there are different formats of writing equation of a line so first format is point slope form what does it mean you have you'll be given a slope value and the coordinate point will be given to you and you'll be asked to find the equation of this particular line so what is the equation equation is y minus y1 equals to m into x minus x1 right so slope here is as you can see the example slope is given 3 point is 2 comma minus 4 so when you solve this you'll get my y minus minus 4 equals to 3 into x minus 2 when you simplify this you'll get as y equals to 3x minus 10 right so with this we can easily find what is the equation of the line for this particular case that is slope point form next term we have is point point form so in this point point form as you can see so suppose we have two points that is point 1 is x1 y1 point 2 is x2 y2 so what is the equation simple y minus y1 equals to m into x minus x1 m equals to rise by run y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 how will you find this m using this formula right so here the what is the difference from the previous case in the previous case the slope was given here the slope is not given you have to find out and simply you need to do the same thing and substitute here get the equation from this relation right moving to next term we have slope intercept form so suppose you have slope as m and y intercept as c so the general equation is y equals to mx plus c right so this is y intercept c so slope is given 3 by 4 y intercept is minus 3 so as you can see simply substitute here the slope value and intercept value you will get y equals to 3x by 4 plus minus 3 which is 3x by 4 minus 3 okay so this is slope intercept form next term we have in intercept form so suppose you have given x intercept and y intercept what is x intercept x intercept means the point at which the line cuts the x axis and y intercept means the point at which the line cuts y axis so the equation is simple x by a equals to y upon b equals to 1 so here you can see this is x intercept which is 4 and this is y intercept which is 3 so x by 4 plus y by 3 equals to 1 so this is the equation of the line for this particular case which is intercept form moving to next we have point inclination form so inclination is given as theta point is x1 y1 so the equation is x minus x1 by cos theta equals to y minus y1 by sin theta equals to r so for finding the equation you need to do this x minus x1 by cos theta y minus y1 by sin theta okay so if when you equate this take these two first terms so you inclination you have 30 degree point you have 3 comma 4 substitute here get the answer with this if you want to simplify this further you can simplify it
next form of equation we have is in the given in the normal form okay so let's consider that small p equals to length of the normal which is perpendicular from the origin to the line so here as you can see in the diagram so this green line is perpendicular to this blue line so equation for this blue line is equation is x cos theta plus y sin theta equals to p where theta is the angle of inclination of this normal with this x axis all right so the equation is x cos theta plus y sin theta equals to p so example is so as you can see this black line so i need to find the equation of this black line but this red line is perpendicular to this black line and this red line is originating from this origin so from this origin to this point the distance is 10 and this is making an angle 45 degree with this horizontal with positive x axis so the equation is x cos theta plus y sin theta equals to p so theta here is 45 and this length given p is 10 so simply substitute here you'll get x cos 45 plus y sin 45 equals to 10 so x by root 2 plus y by root 2 equals to 10 so this is your answer that is equation of this black line moreover so these are the special cases that is a vertical line and horizontal line so the equation of vertical line here is x equals to a and equation of horizontal line is y equals to b so can you tell me what is the equation of the line for this this also this is also vertical this y x is also vertical this x is x axis is also horizontal right so comment in the comment box what is the equation for this y axis and what is the equation for this x axis so there are certain important results you need to keep in your pager which is your brain okay so first one is angle between the two lines having the slopes m1 and m2 so let us consider we have two lines whose so slopes are given m1 and m2 so the angle is theta equals to tan inverse of m1 minus m2 divided by 1 plus m1 m2 okay so this is the angle moreover two lines are parallel if m1 equals to m2 and two lines are perpendicular if m1 product of m1 and m2 is minus 1 so these two relations are very important you will require in the further engineering calculations there is one general equation for a line which is ax plus by plus c equals to zero okay so this is the general equation of a straight line moreover equation of two lines which are parallel so what is the change as you can see so ax plus by plus c equals to zero is the general so instead of c if you put some other value so that equation will also become parallel for this particular line okay so ax plus by plus c equals to zero will be parallel to ax plus by plus k equals to zero next time we have length of the perpendicular from point x1 y1 to the line ax plus by plus equals to zero as you can see that ax plus by plus equals to zero is the equation of a straight line so here i have a green line green straight line so the equation for this line is 2x plus 3y plus 3 equals to zero so when you compare this with the standard one you'll get the value of a as 2 b as 3 and c as 4 okay so l is ax plus ax1 plus by1 plus c divided by root under of a square plus b square when you solve this you'll get the value as 42 upon root 13 moreover you will ask why i have used this modulus value because the length is never negative we need to take only the magnitude so in order to avoid the negative values this modulus value is given right so these were the things that we have studied in your straight line so in the upcoming lectures we'll see some more interesting topics and these topics are very important and very basic because if you feel i mean if you fail in understanding these little topics you'll later face problem in uh, higher engineering mathematics so that is why i'm going with a slow right so stay connected with us we'll see you in the next lecture till then bye bye take care